It's uh, 12.06 p.m. on Tuesday, the 12th of June, 2012. I'm Mark Strassman, reporter with Utopia News. I'm about to talk to J.R. DeShazzo, who's director of the Luskin Center at UCLA and associate professor of public policy and urban planning at the University of California at Los Angeles. Welcome to Utopia News. Thank you very much. It's great to be here. Uh, tell us what the Luskin Center is. The Luskin Center uh, is a center that focuses on emerging energy and environmental technologies and the policies that are designed to hasten their adoption. And uh, we do analysis on uh, uh, better designing and evaluating those, those policies that focus on emerging energy uh, technologies. All right. Now, the city of Los Angeles has, has finally instituted a feed-in tariff. What does the new ordinance instituting this uh, provide for? Well, it provides for the Department of Water and Power to procure approximately 10 megawatts of new capacity uh, of distributed solar generation within um, the DWP territory. Okay, and when does the program start and according to what timetable will it be rolled out? Well, uh, it actually, um, the, the program application period uh, starts uh, June 29th. Um, or, Oh, actually, it will run from May 17th to June 29th, uh, and the, um, the DWP will announce the awards uh, in September is their target date. All right, and what role did you and the Los Angeles Business Council play in, get, play in getting this policy enacted? Well, the Los Angeles uh, Business Council put together a coalition of progressive businesses, the nonprofits, um, and, and other labor organizations that support the, the widespread adoption of distributed solar in Los Angeles and played a key role over a three-year period in, in keeping the department focused on local distributed solar uh, as we proceeded through. I think we had three different general managers over that time period. So they, the LABC provided, and Mary um, Leslie in particular, tremendous leadership uh, in terms of, of the politics and policy of this. UCLA uh, undertook, I think, five different analyses of the um, of the feasibility of, of, of local distributed solar, um, identifying the capacity that the city of Los Angeles had uh, in terms of different uh, customer classes, uh, assessing what it would cost to, uh, to uh, basically procure that solar, uh, and to identify um, basically matching job training programs with with the um, the what we, we what we discovered was a lag in the implementation of local solar programs given the targets that DWP and, and other local utilities had set for themselves they were lagging behind and so workers that were trained in solar installation weren't getting the jobs that they needed so we've done a, a variety of analysis that show the the promise and potential and the need to move relatively quickly while the federal tax incentives are still in place uh, and, and while utilities are offering rebates that are attractive to, to, to businesses and, and, and homeowners. Say a little bit about the politics. Who supported this program and who opposed it? Uh, well, I, I think officially it didn't have any opposition. Um, I think there is some um, general sort of long-standing concern that renewable energies are somewhat more expensive and so ratepayer advocates um, tend to look closely at programs like this but uh, I think that uh, a, a lot of the um, business owners who own warehouses who own office buildings that could host solar and might be direct beneficiaries of this were supportive um, of course, many of the the, the nonprofits, uh, the Sierra Club in particular, played a leadership role with with its sister organizations in the in the region. Um, the the uh, Chamber of Commerce was supportive of it. Uh, so, as were many uh, local uh, business organizations. How important a development in terms of the uh, the solar energy deployment in Los Angeles is this uh, development? Well, it represents a significant shift in the strategy for procuring renewable energy. Uh, DWP, like lots of other utilities in California, has a, a California Solar Initiative or a net metering program that targets primarily residential and, and some, some commercial. And we're in the, midst, in the middle of that program. And of course, that program allows site hosts to install only enough solar capacity to offset their annual consumption. The, what's exciting about this program is it's, 
it's a local procurement program that's not constrained by how much energy you consume as a site host. So large warehouses, which have huge hosting capacity on their rooftops or parking lots, um, but consume very little energy, can now maximize the, the use uh, of that space in, in generating renewable energy um, more effectively. So it's a new strategy. Um, and the program that DWP has designed is actually new as well in the sense that it's not a traditional feed-in tariff which, uh, in which the utility would announce a fixed price that everyone would get automatically. Um, their demonstration project, um, which, which has just opened, uh, in fact is, is basically an auction. It's an auction mechanism whereby if, if you think that you might like to participate, you, you would estimate the cost at which you think you could supply a kilowatt hour um, you would describe the quantity of power you thought you could provide, uh, and you would supply that information in your application to DWP, and they will choose uh, those applicants that um, it, it's not only low cost uh, in terms of your generation cost, and, and it's also other criteria such as the interconnection cost that they will use to evaluate your application. So final applications will are meant to sort of provide ratepayers with the greatest value. Um, but they, they also are basically going to, it's going to discourage very kind of middle to, to smaller type customers who can't afford the application process and the risk of not having their application accepted because there's quite a bit of, of, of analysis that has to go into the application itself. So the transaction cost of applying are, are rather high. So only the, what we're expecting to see is only mid to large size projects um, participating. Okay, is the LA uh, DWP happy with the program, and will they do all they can to implement it? Well, the, the general manager, Ron Nichols, has uh, been very consistent in his support for this program and very public in his desire to make sure that the department uh, shifts culturally in its, its historical attitude towards distributed solar and, and really makes this program work. Um, uses it as a strategy to add value to um, to DWP's uh, portfolio of renewable energy, and 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 also keeps costs down for ratepayers. So I, I think that um, I, I'm, I'm convinced the general manager is behind it, and I think it's got a um, a good chance of succeeding. We we because it's a new type of program, they don't really have anyone they can learn from thus far, and so there it's going to be an experiment that we should all uh, monitor closely and learn from. Mm -hmm. And I think DWP. Um, has articulated exactly their goal of learning from this program. That's one of the reasons they've structured it the way they have. Who in city government is responsible for monitoring and evaluating the program? Uh, well, the the city council, uh, which oversees DWP's performance in general and and makes budgetary recommendations, uh, is is obviously responsible. The the mayor who appoints uh, both the DWP commission and the general manager is is responsible. Uh, I expect that we'll see our new ratepayer advocate also uh, keep an eye on this program as it develops. According to what criteria will the success of the program be measured? Uh, I think there are a couple of criteria. Uh, the first is uh, whether or not um, DWP is able to quickly evaluate applications and identify uh, and award contracts. Uh, in, a, in a timely manner and in a transparent manner so that all applicants, those that are chosen and those that are, that are not chosen, understand the, 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 the reason uh, for DWP's decision. So they have a set of criteria, uh, and, and I think transparency is going to be one evaluative criteria. A second will be whether the program produces reasonably low-cost uh, distributed solar for Los Angeles. So I think we'll have to look at the bids and look at, um, at, at the prices that people are offering. I think the other thing the, pro the pro program promises is to demonstrate the latent capacity within Los Angeles to generate low-cost distributed solar. So I think we're going to be surprised, even when we look at the applications that aren't chosen, by how much capacity is being offered to DWP and at what reasonable prices. Lastly, I think whether this, this demonstration program, it's called a demonstration program because we're meant to learn from it. The real, the real determination of whether this program succeeds or not is whether DWP can learn from this experience and formulate the next stage of the process um, in, a, in, a, in, a more, um, in, in a more rational, transparent way with a fixed price and and procure even more capacity. So this, let me just put this in context. In early 2012, 
um, we're supposed to have the, this 10 megawatt demo program. Um, later in the year, DW, DWP in 2012 indicates that it will approve an additional 75 megawatts of, of a program, and they, they say this will be a more traditional fit with a fixed tariff that will be adjusted, you know, um, either annually or biannually. Um, and then there's the expectation that uh, between now and 2016, when the federal tax credit is meant to expire, there'll be an additional 75 megawatts on top of that. So we're we're looking for somewhere between, um, you know, 85 and 150 megawatts to come in um, over the next five years, but only 10 have been approved so far. Okay. What does this program mean for solar energy installers? Uh, it, it means an additional 10 megawatts of projects, for starters. Uh, it also means that I think uh, mid-size to smaller solar projects are going to be competitively bid now under this program. Um, and so their role in helping to develop bids for site hosts is going to become quite important in the competitiveness of those site hosts in this program. So their role as partners is, is going to be critical to the success of the program. Um, I think looking forward, if this program is shown to, to be well managed um, and, 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 um, and successful, what it means is that we'll scale up very quickly, hopefully towards a 150 megawatt program within the next two years, or at least get that commitment um, with more capacity in the future. Does this program provide any new opportunities for renewable energy investors? I think that it does. I, I think that um, what we'll see is projects 500 kW to 1 megawatt being uh, much more attractive and, and needing financing. And I, I, I would not be surprised to see, you know, 15 to 25 of, of, of projects in those, those ranges uh, funded uh, as a result of this early demonstration project. All right. Um, how far does the program go towards actualizing the total solar potential of Los Angeles? It's a drop in the bucket, but it's an, a very important first step. Uh, you know, what we have uh, committed to is 10 megawatts. Um, you know, we know that the, the rooftop hosting capacity of the city is 5.5 gigawatts. So, of course, not all of that is economically available rooftop capacity, but this is a tiny, tiny uh, amount, a, a small program, but the, the it's, it's aspirational significance is what I would emphasize. If we can do this well and learn from it locally and trust in procurement programs like this, uh, we should be able to look at five, a 500 megawatt program, a, 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 a thousand megawatt program in the next, you know, four to five years. All right. How important a role model is this for other cities or is it sort of a, a, a sued, uh, restricted model for Los Angeles? I don't think it's restricted at all. I, I think Los Angeles, as the, the nation's largest municipal utility, is going to be a role model for the other municipal-owned utilities in Los Angeles County and in California. Uh, I think its experimentation with small-scale auctions are something that every utility in the, in the country can learn from. Um, I think the results will be very carefully and closely scrutinized uh, in terms of the value that utilities get from this kind of small-scale auction project process. And how do you think the program might be able to be improved? You know, I think that uh, one of the big challenges that all procurement programs face is keeping the cost of, an, of submitting an application as low as possible. And any time you have a com competitive bidding process, the bidders know that probably 80% of the applicants are their, – their application is going to be rejected. And so they, they kind of have to be, able, be well off enough, rich enough to be able to – incur the cost of developing a competitive application, but then being willing to lose and lose those, those dollars invested. Um, so the, the reason that we have feed-in tariffs in the world is if you have a fixed price, you have price certainty, you know that your project is going to um, be accepted once you've done your financial analysis. Um, and, and so you, 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 don't have to, you don't have to put as much money out and take as much risk that your application is not going to be accepted under a feed-in tariff as you would under an auction process like that. So th I think the biggest improvement would be for, for middle to small scale projects to have a fixed tariff announced so that their application and transaction costs are going to be lower and, and the program will be more accessible to smaller programs. Um, now that said, DWP has made a conscious decision to, to try and find the most cost-effective distributed solar 
between uh, well, under a, for projects under a megawatt in, in the in the city. And to its credit, it's at least focusing on that mid that mid sized project in in the um, you know in the continuum of possible projects. W will this system uh, eventually go to that uh, standard feed-in tariff approach that you've just mentioned? The the general manager has said it will. He has said the goal is to learn from the prices that we discover uh, in the demonstration project and take those discovered prices and use them to help us set a, a fixed tariff over time. Um, and so that's what we're all hoping will happen. Okay, good. Why don't you wrap up by telling us uh, whether you think overall this is a good first step towards the solarization of Los Angeles? Well, let me let me first acknowledge that the DWP's net metering program is is an important first step. Um, this is a critical uh, new type of program that I think is going to be able to be scaled in a very cost-effective way for Los Angeles. Uh, again, if it's well managed, if it's transparent, if applicants feel like they're being treated fairly and they understand how the game is going to be played. So I think DWP is uh, to, to be credited with the design of this program and I think we should all um, watch cl closely as it's implemented to, to, to support DWP and its, its success. Okay, good. I want to thank you for helping us understand it, and I hope we can talk later as the program progresses and see how, uh, how, how the developments uh, are working out. Thank you, Mark. Take care. Okay, bye.